Welcome to the Kiki Files, guys. I'm so glad that you're here. Today I have a crazy, crazy story. You wouldn't even think it was real. My friend told me to, to look it up and I did. And when I read it, I felt like I was watching a, a full length movie, you know, a murder mystery movie. So definitely a good one for you guys today. Marcel Andre Henry Felix Petot was born July 1st of 1897. He's known as a French doctor and a serial killer. So basically the whole thing about Marcel is that he was convicted of murder. There was bodies found in his basement, in his home during World War II. The first known diagnosis of mental illness with Marcel was when he was 17 years old in 1916. A couple years later in 1916, he enlisted into the war and was a part of the First World War. While in the French army, he was injured and sent home and was arrested because he stole army supplies and morphine. I couldn't believe it that, you know, after his second bout with mental Ill illness, right after this, he was sent back to war and sent to the front lines and he ended up injuring his foot and being sent back home. He was discharged from the army and received disability pensions and was also, it was diagnosed that he had severe mental illness. Patot enrolled in a accelerated medical program that they had and was in it for only eight months and he ended up receiving his doctorate degree. <laughs> he became a doctor in eight months, which is crazy because you, you're, you're thinking to yourself, what could he have possibly learned in that eight, eight month span? You know, it it's just so crazy to me, you know, how he could, you know, you could you can go to school for eight months and then all of a sudden, you know, you're saving lives, you're saving people from illnesses, you're, you know, I'm pretty sure he was in over his head, but he ended up getting his degree. It was basically like a, an apprenticeship to become a doctor. His internship was at a mental hospital in Evreux in 1921. It was at this time when Patot ended up using narcotics for his own personal use. He also performed illegal abortions. And at this time, you know, he would go into other people's homes and collect a fee and perform the abortion in the homes. Um, and I'm not sure how many he did, but I'm pretty sure he did a lot. Money obviously became a huge problem for Patot because he also stole from the town treasury, he stole from the stone cross, which I looked up and the the closest thing I could figure out was that it was probably gems that were on the cross or maybe a um, an offering. In 1926, he had an affair with one of his patient's daughters, Louise Delaveau. Delavo disappeared shortly after their affair, and a lot of people believe that she was one of his first victims. Neighbors reported seeing Patot putting a trunk into his car, letting a huge speculation that he had murdered her. I don't understand why the cops weren't called. I mean, not that they had phones back then, but why he wasn't questioned or there was any kind of investigation going on during that time. It's not like law and order and it's not like, you know, the state troopers would show up at the door after a phone call. That same year, Patot got into politics. He ended up becoming mayor of Villeneuve sur yon Instead of using his power for good and helping out his community, he ended up embezzling funds from the town. Patot married a wealthy butcher's daughter in 1927 and shortly after they had a son. In 1931, his crimes have eventually caught up with him and he ended up resigning as mayor. Surprisingly, he was given a second chance and he got a chair on the Yong Department Council, but he was forced to resign because he ended up stealing electricity from the town. Poteau ended up moving to Paris. It's, it's unknown if he took his family with him. I'm pretty sure he did, <laughs> but you never know. Maybe he didn't. He ended up getting his license, you know, um, reestablished because he put fake credentials on his 
application and he became a doctor and he was able to make death certificates. The rumor mill started to swirl because of his prescriptions that he made with the narcotics and the illegal abortions and people were starting to get really weary of like who who is this guy where'd he come from the german occupation of france is basically when the nazi german soldiers invaded france and during this time patot was it, it just increased his downfall basically it just it caused him to react in more sinister ways at the hands of innocent people. According to Patote, he worked with French resistance during the occupation. Patote ended up meeting with high-ranking allied commanders. And this is where it gets a little tricky, so just try to try to hang in there. Patote was cited as a source many years later by John F. Grumbach. John F. Grumbach was the head, the former head of the independence espionage group called The Pond. Patot claimed to operate a secret escape route during the occupation. At this point, Patot went under the name Dr. Eugene. He basically said that he could help all these people escape the, the German government, Jewish refugees, French resistant fighters, um, with a secret escape route from the war-torn Europe to Argentina. He charged each person 25,000 francs, which totaled to about $24,500 in U.S. money. And during that time, that was probably a whole lifetime of savings and then some. The You know, times were tough, and I'm, <laughs> where they got this money from, I don't know, but he made it, he made a lot of money doing this. And guess what? It was all a murderous trap. He told everybody that they had to get something called an inoculation, which was basically a vaccine um, because they had to get the vaccine before they entered Argentina. And the vaccine was basically a dose of cyanide, which killed all of them. He tried hiding the bodies in the scene and he tried burning them in his chimney. What he did was similar to a cremation, which he doused the bodies in quicklime, which caused that cremation type of soot to happen, to get rid of the bodies. And it was just so inhuman and disgusting. And, and neighbors smelt, he, they could smell the horrible stench from his house. And in March of 1944, um, the cops went to him. He escaped though. <laughs> He escaped, he got a new alias, he, he grew his beard out, but he was eventually caught and he was arrested, he went to trial, and he was found guilty. He was really cocky and sure of himself. He thought that he could get away with this, that he could get rid of 23 bodies without anybody knowing, and he ended up scamming about $2 million during this time, and it's just sad that he, put the blame on these people that they were enemies of France when he was the one that murdered them for money. On May 25th, 1946, Patot was beheaded by guillotine or guillotine. And that's basically a, a machine that has a blade on it and just comes down and beheads the person. When my friend told me about this story, I, did, I could not believe that there was a serial killer during World War II, and that just made me think that there's probably so many more stories out there. So I'm definitely gonna be doing some research, and if you guys have any requests, please let me know down below, and I will definitely do them. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm so excited about this channel and where it could lead. I have a friend that's gonna be joining me and talking about more stories, and I just appreciate all your guys' support and love, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, bye.